I am uh, Tatiana Bazzichelli, the director of the Disruption Network Lab. Uh, that is a project run by me and two other wonderful women that I also really want to thank, uh, Daniela Silvestrin and Kim Foss. So first of all, I really ask you to make a big applause to them. I never ask that, but this time I really want. Also because this event uh, has always been done together and also the previous one, so uh, I think it's important and I really want to thank you. And uh, just to describe a bit what we do, the Disruption Network Lab is an ongoing platform, platform of events and we usually are working with the topic of uh, activism, art and disruption. And we are funded by the Hapstadt Kultur Funds and our main cooperation is with the Kunst and Kreuzberg Battalion. We have also there in the public Stefan Bauer that I want to thank as well. And uh, for this uh, specific event, we have also a special collaboration with the Porn Film Festival Berlin and also with the Kit Kat Club. And uh, we will then go all together to party there. So <laughs> I really hope you will join. And uh, uh, there will be also one of our participants, uh, War Bear, that will play there. So you will have the possibility to see him actually in a double uh, <laughs> performance. And uh, uh, also I would like to thank our media partner, TADS, Ex-Berliner and Furterfield. Um, first of all, I think it's important uh, to say, uh, I think it's as part of the German law, that uh, this is event is plus 18. So if you are younger than that, unfortunately, we have to say that it's not the event for you. But uh, uh, anyway, can happen next time in your life. And uh, as we usually do with, with the Disruption Lab, we have always a combination of interesting uh, speakers that are also coming from different backgrounds. And in this case, we have uh, porn practitioners, uh, also porn entrepreneurs, uh, performers, uh, sex worker rights advocates, uh, investigative journalism, and critical thinker. And uh, the title of this event is porn tubes, sharing the explicit. And I want to say a bit something about this title because it has been actually a research that has been going on since some years because already when I was working as curator at Transmediale Festival uh, in 2014, together also with uh, Francesco Warbear, Macarone Palmieri, we curated a section that was related to these topics. And from that time, we really understood that the idea of uh, porn tubes is actually a really difficult matter because uh, um, when you really start to investigate and going a bit deeper and deeper into this subject, uh, then you discover that uh, pornography is totally changing today also because uh, there are the porn tubes and especially the market of pornography, the consume and the distribution of that. And uh, so when we speak about porn tubes, we usually speak about uh, uh, platforms like uh, porno tube, red tubes, uh, uporn, etc. And uh, when you do a research, and also here we will have wonderful investigative journalist Roy Clubbing that will tell about us, then we understand that uh, a lot of these porn tubes platform work because they use uh, free content and often they are pirated contents. And so they're also taken from other companies without the company knows or sometimes they are sold to them uh, by really few money. So this is totally changing the confirmation of uh, porn market and also uh, the role and the activity of porn producer and porn practitioners and not only the porn but also the erotica business. And so, so these, uh, we were really interested in this change and we are going uh, today uh, to have different people that uh, will unfold this matter from different backgrounds and different uh, point of view. And um, so uh, we will start uh, uh, with uh, our wonderful keynote, uh, Carmen Rivera, that I'm really happy to have here. It has been a really wonderful experience also to get to know her because I have to say she's really a great person. So thank you, Carmen, for being with us.
that the, the paper doesn't turn. And um, then we will also have uh, um, other speakers that will speak about how the condition of sex working is actually changing, Liad, uh, Usain, Kantorowicz, and P.G. Machotti. Uh, and uh, uh, at the same time, we will have Nishan Shah that will speak about the uh, online porn regulation. And uh, we also invited another person that is speaking instead from the business perspective. She could not be here today, so later I will introduce her more. Um, is Sasha Shonen from the Picky Bank Girls um, Company. So she has actually did a video exactly for uh, these uh, events uh, to show what they do. Um, but uh, first I want to start uh, introducing briefly this keynote. And I will also leave the stage to the moderator, uh, Gaia Novati. Um, so, as I said, the keynote uh, is with Carmen Rivera. We decided to have as title Carmen Rivera Entertainment Deconstructing Power Sharing BDSM. <clears throat> and um, I really like that she calls it entertainment because <laughs> I think it's a wonderful word for this. Um, I think then also that she will explain better. And um, <clears throat> she is a mistress and fetish SM performer. And the uh, keynote uh, is moderated by Gaia Novati, uh, a net activist and researcher of indie porn. So I want uh, briefly to introduce Ga Gaia Novati and also say just something uh, briefly about the the trailer we're going to see. So with Guy, I've been working since really long time, so I feel also uh, touched to be now in the position to introduce her because uh, we met uh, since uh, years uh, when uh, she was uh, really active in the Italian queer counterculture movements and also uh, researching on the field of independent pornography. And uh, she's a co-founder of the Sexy Shock, uh, laboratory of gender teams uh, and first uh, sex shop managed by women in Italy. And also together we founded the Come to Cut Festival that was part of the uh, uh, Berlin Porn Film Festival in 2006 and 2007. And actually, by the way, she was also with me the co-curator of a show that we did at the Kunst and Kreuzberg Bethanien uh, in 2008 that was called Hackfem East. And um, so I just want to say something before we will uh, see this trailer, because I mean, I think I recognize a lot of people in the audience. I don't think you will ever have problem, but I feel to say that, so, I mean, there will be uh, hardcore content. So if you are really sensitive, close your eyes. <laughs> Otherwise, enjoy it. And uh, so now I leave uh, the stage to this trailer, and then we will have Carmen and Gaia uh, having their conversation. Uh, after that, we will have a, a break of uh, half an hour, and we go on then with our panel. Thank you. So, I have to say that uh, no animal were harmed seeing this movie. But I, <laughs> I'm quite sure that scenes showing harm to animals were, in this case, definitely not simulated. So I will ask <laughs> later Carmen to speak a little bit about uh, what is in this movie, on this trailer, and in her work. But uh, first, I will start with a small introduction of what uh, we are going to speak right now. Um, thanks, Tatiana, for inviting us, of course, uh, and uh, taking the words for what you say before I go strictly to the point, uh, and uh, I'm going to speak about uh, the object, the matter that we are now trying to understand better. So already pornography, the idea of pornography of course changed. The, the, what we experience now is not of course what uh, 100 years ago looks like and we experience uh, and already in the 50s we already saw a huge shift uh, with the introduction of the Syrian pornography, thinking about uh, Playboy like a kind of uh, example of these phenomenon. But as Tatiana said, now tubes uh, and uh, the evolution of the social platform seems to redefine again uh, the concept and the perception that we have about pornography. A decade ago, with the idea of post-pornography, people started to identify a movement of digital artists, gender critics, free minders, or free thinkers, that try to redefine and redefine the concept, uh, distracting the idea of the mainstream pornography. 
with the, the purpose to regain authenticity of the embodiedness of the sexualities. This movement was really strictly connected to the do-it-yourself movement, the technology was one. And of course, they use this own ability to, uh, of the, with the technology to transforming the market of the pornography from inside. The mainstream ones, uh, as everywhere else, uh, take control of it. And now we witness a faint line uh, in between what we are called uh, halt, different, post-porn, and the mainstream one. We know, of course, that from, from the diffusion of the print to, through VHS uh, and the uh, internet, the, the pornography has always played a primary role to show at the evolution of the technologies uh, the path to run the way. The pornography still is, uh, and actually is, uh, a workshop of experiment, different kind of visual pleasure and desire obtained by a different and creative use of new technologies uh, and of their immersive contents. Creative uh, right now um, are not just uh, any more contra-current uh, workers, but they are now part uh, of the mainstream industry itself. And that is happening in any field, not just in pornography. But as we said, pornography in this case in an, is an avant-garde in this progress. In the era of post fordist work, the, the idea of this drop traditional manager, managerial things and encourage a more creative work environment seems normal, but moreover looks normalized. So what we are now, uh, at which point we are now uh, and which one are the questions that we have to ask to ourselves? What happened now? Where the criticism that starts uh, eight, decades ago with the movement of the post-pornography ended up and we still need this kind of criticism and which kind of new ideas of sexuality are we, are we now developing all over and how change the work for the producer and the service for the customers we are going to start now to analyze all of these through the eyes of the fetish and the BDSM production. That actually, is, I think, uh, is the less explicit form of pornography, if we think about pornography with a strictly definition, so to show uh, explicit, explicit uh, description of a sexual act and a sexual organs. So, but is at the contrary, the more explicit uh, in terms of creative work that uh, needs to have done behind of that. So here we are with uh, one of the mistresses, the masters uh, of the BDS uh, pornography and the fetish, Carmen Rivera. Page don't turn, quote. But uh, so, Carmen Rivera, she's uh, a fantastic uh, woman. She's uh, um, a TV actor, she's a moderator, and she is also a photographer and a model. And as I read, she started when she was already 50, when she was 15 years old to be a model, and, to, and then she started to create her own career as a photographer. And uh, she worked uh, uh, for different kind of TV programs uh, and, and, and the, in the TV series Verona's Sexwelt, in which she went around Germany to interviewing young, young or not young uh, couple about their own sexual life. She founded also her own uh, um, show called, call I say in German, Anton Haus Tirol und die geile Heidi. <laughs> but she also played in, so to say, ordinary produ TV production in Germany, like uh, Alles Atze, Rote Meile, and last now in uh, the Name des Ehren. She worked uh, everywhere, like uh, in the fashion and uh, exhibition and uh, clubs and big events. She was also Penthouse Girl in uh, one, uh, 1999. Wow. And uh, but she is also she she's also known in her fetish and BDSM world as uh, the Baronessa di Rivera, and <laughs> and she has now uh, her own studio here in Berlin, where she owns her own company that is uh, in of film production, in which she is not also the producer but also the director and also the actress. That actually she cover all the the part of the production of uh, film uh, and movie. And um, I, uh, when I read your biography, 
I was uh, really intrigued, not just because of the um, evolution of your story, that actually is really interesting, but what uh, really interested to me was uh, the fact that uh, reading of that, uh, the impression that I got was n not actually the fire and the um, uh, chilly domina, instead uh, the girl of the next door. So you describe yourself in a really fantastic way, really simple and really immediate. And this kind of impression that I got about you reading your pornography, I also saw in your movies, uh, where I found uh, the idea of games and prank uh, part of your work. And this kind of uh, game and playful um, atmosphere doesn't really change the atmosphere uh, of BDSM that you are trying to describe. And moreover, it enrich that and give more uh, content and contribute. So I really like that. In, uh, in that at that point, uh, I really want you to speak a little bit much uh, more about your work uh, and uh, where you come from and why you decide to arrive at that point. And uh, um, yes, and of course, if you can say two words about what we saw before, it would be really amazing. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, hello. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for coming here and enjoy this party and welcome in my little perverted world. Um, I don't know really where to start with that because it's been a long, long development of my life that I came out with this uh, kind of uh, BDSM. Uh, I must say that uh, many of my customers or friends and also interesting people came up to me with many ideas and I just realized them because I am a person who always like to be uh, interesting in new stuff and uh, this is my experience for myself to make this little life we have uh, a little bit more excited. And uh, I think my character, that's it. That's my character to be um, unique. I try to be 100% behind what I'm doing. And this maybe makes a little bit of success in every, um, every work you're doing, uh, that you are standing behind what you're doing. Even when this work grows up and a lot of um, work comes to you, what you also have to do, and uh, you still have to be natural, and that's why I say bizarre by nature, that is exactly what I am, bizarre by nature. <laughs> Is your, your nature and actually it's really shown very well but um, as I as I said so the idea of BDSM looks like in your work uh, much more less uh, than a starting point uh, a, a more a kind of complement uh, of your work where you put all the abilities that you got before in one unique uh, um, in one unique uh, creation of contact. So is it like uh, everything you have done before came up on what you are doing right now, right now? Could be like that? It grows after a while because we are all learning by lifestyle and uh, many, many people came to me with, um, telling me that what I'm doing is great because uh, I do it with my heart and uh, yeah, what can I say? It's <laughs> difficult to <laughs> explain. <laughs> so, as a, uh, as a single manager of your company, and uh, I consider that as a singularity in terms of you doing uh, all the, fa all the, the, um, the character, the need uh, in producing one movie, and can you tell us uh, a little bit uh, more about uh, what uh, uh, the, the market uh, in, in the porn market uh, and uh, the rule the cross uh, inside the market uh, and of course uh, if uh, during your experience you notice that in the last decades something changed um, there's a really big change in this market because I'm in this market since almost 20 years now and I start working in the mainstream pornography uh, not as an actor, active part, um, playing really sexual 
movies, but uh, I'm a lot of, uh, I watched a lot of these companies uh, producing, and I'm a moderator in this one uh, TV show you said about um, having sex with couples and doing the interview. But I see many, many people in this uh, business behind the scene, they all complain a lot about the development of this uh, pornography industry all over the world because of the Pern tubes probably is one of the reasons that the, the, the life will change in this uh, industry and also um, the competition uh, between actors, producers, um, it is not like a big family. I say the truth, that is a real hard, tough uh, work, especially for women uh, who are behind the scene working as a producer, also like an actor, it's not easy to accept from other people in this business, I say about the porn, uh, the main porn part, uh, I see myself not in this mainstream, but I have a lot of contacts with these people, of course, because I need a, a distribution for my DVD market, uh, and also handling the internet market with streaming and downloading companies. And this is a lot, lot of work behind the scene, what takes a lot of energy, but I'm still not giving up because uh, I have so many new ideas and um, yeah, I want to realize all of this in this little life. <laughs> but uh, I think the porn tube will, is somehow is good, somehow is bad, because it makes you popular in one thing, but it also gives you a lot of pressure to continue um, putting uh, content every week, every week updating, and all this gives a producer, a small producing company like I am, because many people think I have a big company. No, I am manager, I am producer, I'm director, I'm actor, I'm organizer. And all around this is a really 24-hour job, and especially for a little woman like me, it is sometimes going over your limit, and you will always uh, give up one of your privacy, and of course, family life is very small too, but uh, for this, all of this, you need really a good background. You need some partnership behind it that you can handle all of this, and uh, the point you or the tube sites, of course, uh, also the, the sites who are stolen content, trading content, uh, they give us a real big uh, trouble. Like we all say, it's a pain in our ass. <laughs> but also we can use it, of course. Uh, we can try to go keep good contact with some people, they, um, they own, porn tubes and this and we can sell license of course we can sell license of our movies and this can you explain better how it works this uh, to the to the audience how it works this uh, idea to selling uh, uh, content or to selling movies to the tubes and i, I have to remind the, the audience that uh, the movie of carmen more they are mm, mm, all of them they are long movie they are not short clip that's something that maybe you don't know that is really interesting about your work so can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about this con discussion about selling yeah. and giving um, I'm not uh, producing just clip sites. Uh, of course, I use clip sites too, but I produce in uh, two directions for internet and DVD market. And for the DVD market, you have um, something like a law that you have to give them um, a whole movie story about 90 or 70 minutes long. So it has to contend for different scenes and uh, in the fetish or in the BDSM scene, it is also very important to um, show uh, a fantasy has to build up. You cannot show, like in the mainstream part, you're doing gangbang, you don't need a story really. But in the fetish scene, it's totally different. You need to um, grow the fantasy up in his, f in his fantasy, in his head, uh, that he enjoy what we're doing with him. And, um, it is totally different, um, but also in the fetish market, uh, I see more and more that they only produce uh, clip slides and clips uh, just 10 minutes long. And for me, this is uh, impossible to do because uh, 
my production work will start at 8 in the morning and end about 10 or 11 in the night with everything. Also clean up the location because I want that everybody feels good and books me again for renting his location. So I do all around it and uh, for me this is like a one day full job. And why should I do only 10 minutes movies? Um, for me the organizing work behind the scene is so much work still that uh, for me... Um, I will try to do two ways that I produce a movie for DVD market and also uh, give this content to my partnerships in the world for uh, clip sites. And they will split it in parts. Uh, so that's why I have only one time work, but they can also share this content for clip sites. Um, most of the others maybe do it different, but this is my traditional way. I still be in the old traditional way to, to produce a movie with a little bit of meaning behind it and not only doing some content with uh, strap on play, especially fisting games, uh, you need a lot of time to, um, to prepare him and his, uh, to be in a good condition and all this you cannot do in uh, one hour shooting. That's why for me I prefer to do a, a long day work <laughs> and in the end I'm always happy and satisfied that I did it and yeah I'm never uh, happy 100% because I'm a perfectionist <laughs> and I have so many ideas I cannot uh, uh, fulfill in one week, one day so yeah, yeah I, I can imagine <laughs> that is not actually really but all the artists they are never happy about their own work so, do, um, do you say that you, there is a, this kind of complication uh, because of the competition of this kind of new element and new content that are online, uh, thanks to the tube and thanks to the social uh, platform? But um, you, uh, I think also you have to deal with the legal problem that doesn't really help you as a creative worker to uh, regain uh, 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 your own space uh, in this uh, changing of the market. Uh, can you say two words? about that here in Germany, how it works for you as an entrepreneur working legally? Okay, the problem is uh, <laughs> not only in Germany, but okay, in Germany we have a special uh, problem with the Jugendschutz uh, that we cannot uh, show uh, explicit um, transaction sexuality in the preview movies, uh, what we of course have to show so people are interesting to watch more of our content. And uh, this is one of the big problems we have and many producers have, that's why they all move out of Germany because uh, this uh, should be an international global law in the internet and this is still not going on that um, people think like we are discriminated of the law in Germany to produce any kind of uh, movies in the adult entertainment. Um, yeah, that's one of the big problems. The other problem, you also have to uh, find out the, the laws of all different countries like the Switzerland. You cannot uh, doing practicing on peeing or uh, in America is also different, uh, difficult to uh, show movies with fisting, you can only use four fingers but not uh, five fingers, so I was wondering how that happened, because what is the difference between four and five fingers, but you have to handle this problem too, and a lot of arguments about this and that, and um, a producer always has to, yeah work with these laws and those problems. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as I saw, you work it out well. So you, because you have your home company, you have, uh, you're still going, I think you started in 2001, if I, if I understood correctly. But, uh, and what, uh, uh, my impression is that uh, even you, uh, as a professionist and as an artist, as a creative art and worker, you are um, using, of course, internet because uh, it's a platform that you cannot not use. I have the impression that all the content that you produce, uh, you are rather prefer to put uh, in uh, out of the line uh, and not online, uh, because and, and you and you come at, at online just at the end of the process. And uh, is an impression that I have uh, not just speaking with you, but speaking with all other people into the idea of giving quality and not just quantity in terms of. Uh, 
porn uh, sell and porn produced. Is a, a correct impression or you want to say something different? Um, yeah, I, um, I stand behind the quality, not the quantity. But what I uh, see in uh, all kind of fairs where I've been since 20 years that um, the development is very much more in the quantity. And that means that, of course, the producers have not that much, or most of the producers have not that much money to always stay up with the quality, so they produce quantity. And that means um, that the content goes very low, uh, down with the quality. Um, no stories, no good setups. No, uh, the girls, um, for me, in the mainstream part, I say um, what I see right now. I came from Vienna and uh, I uh, saw this fair there. And uh, what I will, what I see is that also in the Venus, the trend now goes more into fast food industry. That means uh, it's not very healthy, especially for the girls, because uh, I think it's a growing up new generation that they don't um, respect too much the work behind what the work the sex workers doing they want to consume quick fast and then uh, hungry and going back to fast food again um, this is the problem what we see now um, that many many girls work there without a healthy um, system and especially the customers or guests from this fair, they can also activate with these girls in these fairs and uh, doing a lot of stuff what uh, normally we would say is not allowed to do. And uh, the victims will be the women who work in this business. That is maybe a development of this new generation who using fast food porn industry. It, that actually has uh, a lot to, to do with uh, the fast uh, and, the, and the speediness that uh, the internet consumption of and the product uh, um, giving us so, and is reflect, reflecting that. But can you, uh, so you sp spoke now about uh, uh, women um, worker, sex worker in the, in the um, uh, exhibition in the fair industry, but is the same I can imagine also in the movie production and uh, can you say something about the woman or the men uh, and the people that are working with you and uh, which kind of experience and which kind of history they bring right now in terms of this uh, uh, discourse about speediness and fast food uh, idea of creating a, a product? Well, it's just, it's just simple. Um, when I see the Venus, for example, um, the consumers don't consume, they don't pay, they don't consume uh, toys or something. They just want to see and watch and in the internet they will get it for free. So uh, many of the booths will not go in there no more and the entrance will get higher and the guests complain that the tickets cost so much money but they don't get anything for this money. Uh, this is like a circle what's going on now and uh, this is the problem because uh, so much in the internet is for free and uh, then the producers have not that much money to invest of a good production where they um, watch out that everybody feels comfortable and also checking on, uh, on the tests and everything. Um, what I see is the gangbang is going on now and they will have a, a, a new law probably this year in Germany. I heard about this. Can you explain that? The, the law will be that this is a discrimination of women because uh, they, will not, uh, they will work like a machine. They are only used. They are used for this quick, fast sex. And this is the problem what we see now, what I see especially now in the, in the fairs, that they consume these fast sex adventures without uh, thinking of the risk for themselves and for the women, of course, too. And the women, many of them, probably uh, they just need the money or I don't know what the purpose is behind many of these actors to be famous, to be in the middle of, uh, and want to be a star or whatever. It is a trend now for young women, uh, what I think is very dangerous in the, in the future. 
Uh, yeah, probably, but <laughs> uh, actually, um, I the point is that uh, probably they will never become star because becoming a porn star right now is not such a easy. I mean, it's completely different as it was before. I I was uh, in a conversation during the last porn film festival, and we ended. There were a, a presentation about porn stars do from the beginning during the, the one hundred so fifty fifty years, and at the end, we are, what we have to say that the idea of porn stars that we are always in mind is not anymore with what we are experienced. So the porn stars uh, that are nowadays uh, we, we find in internet, they are, have the life of a butterfly. They live for a uh, few minutes uh, thanks to the social network and then they crash down, giving space to uh, the other one. So of course there is this speediness. And, uh, but I, um, I assume that also affect the, word of the work of the people that are like you, that try to, that try to do something different uh, and uh, creating uh, and want to create content. Uh, are these people, to, for instance, in this uh, uh, BDS um, uh, world and the BDS movie that you are making, able to, and, uh, to do the movie that, uh, and the character that you, uh, they are able to, um, to, to, to act? Uh, um, and what you ask uh, or not. So they are really into it uh, or they are just trying to expose in themselves uh, uh, how it works, uh, this young generation of people coming into the porn industry. Okay, um, in my uh, kind of business, maybe it is a little bit different because uh, there are many uh, women, they are also mistresses, and of course they will use this platform, shooting with me, and also uh, for the internet uh, to be a little bit more popular in their uh, business. But uh, most of my uh, friends that uh, shoot with me, um, they like what they're doing and uh, they are natural uh, mistresses or they like to practicing this uh, kind of uh, BDSM. And I just give them a platform to present themselves for the public and also give them more experiences with my ideas probably and uh, they like to use uh, uh, my know-how of course and I'm very uh, proud of uh, giving them this uh, chance to uh, yeah to 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 be growing up in this business, but uh, I was talking before about the mainstream. The mainstream is different uh, a little bit still, but also the fetish in SM scene is also a change in this because of the internet. Uh, there are not so many people now uh, going in the public and practicing in, a, in some kind of clubs, uh, the, the BDSM, because uh, uh, it's a mix of party and uh, mainstream people that what these people don't like. Uh, most of my people, what I know is uh, that they don't want this in the public, and especially not with the mainstream who are only taking pictures and don't know what the hell we're doing there. And that's why it, you cannot mix mainstream, normally not with fetish and BDSM, but many of the producers for the mainstream now, what I see is trying to uh, shoot also BDSM fetish movies with porn actors. And uh, for me, this is not uh, authentical because uh, these are only actors, they're not really deep into this um, practicing. And uh, it ends in the, when I give them a, a whip and they say, okay, let's play something with your slaves. They don't know what to do. So that's why I say this, you cannot uh, put this in the mainstream part. Mainstream and BDSM is a different scene. Definitely. <laughs> I, um, I want to ask you a, a little bit, speaking about the, um, uh, the fulfillment of the desires of the client. Uh, um, I know you run a project that is called uh, Wunsch Video. And uh, was really, uh, that really interests to me because uh, the idea is uh, to give the customers or the fan or the client the possibilities to act uh, his own script. So the fan, the client send you the script and you are preparing the, the scenario to give uh, him or her the possibilities to act uh, what uh, actually he or she wants. Um, how uh, does this kind of... Uh, uh, 
production of video work uh, changed? Uh, do you see different kind of uh, desiring? Uh, you sh you see different kind of express uh, expression of the sexualities? And I ask you that because, of course, I mean, all the client now since like the last 10 years, they have much more possibilities to look in the uh, BDS uh, uh, movie all over in internet. So there is not this kind of need of seeing something is less uh, related to uh, conquer it and to gain it. So there is not, but do you, are you still running this project? How it works? Okay, actually now I have a, a, a desire movie. Um, I started with this 1999, I think. Uh, it came somebody to me and asked me, hey, can we shoot uh, together? I have this and this fantasy. And for me, this was brand new. And I said, okay, let's try. Let's see what, what we can do. And then I built up this uh, for offering for many people and it works really good. And um, we had a lot of experiences. I find out by myself uh, new experiences. Um, for example, I had um, a good friend or slave uh, eight years long, and we also doing a lot of performances in Europe with a very special practicing of uh, breast controlling. And this idea came up from him, and we shoot a lot of movies with this. And I learned a lot about this from him. Um, it's not that I learn everything myself. I need, of course, people who can give me these uh, ideas and I will check and find out how it works and I'm very interested in this. Um, after uh, many years, um, there came a couple of competitions. They, of course, uh, I say like Videorama, somebody like from this company he also did the same now and uh, I see okay now this this works somebody uh, copy of course then is an interesting uh, project and um, but now since a couple of years this going also down because uh, you say the internet uh, gives you everywhere the opportunity to find all kind of fetishes um, this grows very fast and, and then, of course, people don't want to invest money for a production, for a desire movie, when they can have this all over the world for free or not for free, but for little money. Okay, if in a special case they want to play personality with me in a movie and they have some fetishes, I will talk with them about that. And I will give them the opportunity to realize this project depend on the money, it's all on the money, because uh, um, many people think, okay, you shoot only 20 minutes, maybe it's cheaper, and, you, and I pay only 150 euro. This is, don't make a sense for me, because the production will not start under 1,500, this is the low budget production, and I try to um, work with this little money to fulfill a good movie, and um, many of the people will not accept this price anymore because uh, of the market is full. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. Um, in your film, um, I saw uh, some, uh, sometimes you attempt to do kind of this kind of meta porn uh, where you invite uh, friends, uh, other dominants around the world uh, to, uh, and you speak about uh, how to make uh, a porn and how to deal with the customers and you have this kind of uh, uh, cool conversation on, on my perspective. And, um, and I, and I found, not just in my perspective, I found that really useful also for a, a consumer because it uh, gives the opportunity to understand how the, the work behind, uh, how it takes to do uh, uh, and to stage some stuff uh, and uh, um, which kind of uh, uh, commitment there is in doing that. And, but on the other side, uh, I really think that uh, we need also this uh, sharing of awareness uh, in between between not just uh, the producer and the cons and consumers, but also in between uh, um, dominas uh, and worker. I mean, um, what do you think about uh, the uh, network uh, in, in between workers uh, and the relationship uh, of this uh, 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 sharing uh, uh, of awareness uh, and uh, self-consciousness about uh, BDSM and pornography? 
Um, okay, I have a good network international with a couple of dominatrics and dungeons and um, I see that they are very interesting in working uh, or in playing in, uh, in a movie with me and uh, I could do many more movies if I could have the chance to travel all over the world. <laughs> but um, yeah, it is like a win-win uh, situation. And uh, still, the fun is always the, the main part of it. They don't, they will not shoot with me when they don't know about my character, and they think that I am not the right person for this. And um, I have a lot of experiences with other mistresses. And uh, what I can say is that uh, in the international market, I like to work a lot of uh, with. Uh, women from uh, the States because they are very open-minded and also from Great Britain um, the people I know are more in the natural dominatrix they are like uh, in, a, in a scene uh, they're also doing probably professional work for uh, dungeons but uh, in the main part they are private dominatrix and this is also uh, better for the movie because it is authentic and also my actors are authentic because these are just uh, straight people. They uh, don't uh, play for money. Or uh, When you pay somebody, you always have the problem that they don't give everything from themselves. And uh, that's why uh, I work only with um, authentic people, um, family people. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's uh, different to the mainstream uh, porn. They have a big industry with agencies and actors and actresses. They are only doing this in life. And of course, they have to pay their rent for what they're working. That's, you cannot, um, you cannot do, um, yeah, this in, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, worry. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Actually, I have to ask us because I don't have the, uh, the um, time. So if someone can tell me if uh, we are running out of time or... Uh, 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 okay, so we can, uh, we can still uh, have a, a small conversation or the audience want to ask uh, something. Do you want to... Uh, do you have some really urgent uh, and important question to ask, uh, Carmen? Oh my God! <laughs> so well, many slaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, please. Uh, I don't know first. where the microphone. I mean, I'm gonna give you the microphone. For, girl, girl first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't. So. I just, I just have a quick question because you said before that there is actually less BDSM that is happening in clubs, and um, I didn't quite understand why. Is it because there's more cameras and people don't want their pictures taken in clubs, or why do you think this is in compared to previous years? Okay, um, what I see and what I hear from other uh, people going out in a club for BDSM parties, uh, not only here in Berlin, also in Munich or somewhere in the other Europe, uh, is that um, there are more and more fetish people in these clubs. They like to wear maybe only latex, but they are not into the latex fetish. And this is like a mix of uh, a lot of party people who only like to show yeah, like a catwalk, and uh, they, they are too shy to play, or probably never tried it, but they like to um, show, yeah, it's a show, and more and more into this show scene, uh, BDSM people don't like to be, because they are scared maybe to open their uh, sexuality in, in this club area. And this is what I hear, not only in Berlin, I hear this from other uh, scene too. Yeah. So in, 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 in this sense, changed a bit the, 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 the desires and how the people are acting and uh, showing their own fantasies in the, in the scene, in the public, I mean. There is a kind of shift. It's like, I think, what I think is, it's a spirit, the spirit of this years, uh, this spirit is not like in the normal, uh, the spirit of the 90s, you will not get back. 
you can go in every club, you will not have the spirit to dance, to, to play, to have party. I try myself in a regular club to find my spirit of the 90s. I cannot get it. I don't know. I always ask myself this question, why this happened? I cannot, maybe I'm getting old. Maybe the BDSM people are getting old. I really don't know. I talk with, I talk with. It's actually what I thought. I talk, <laughs> with, uh, I talk with a mistress working since 30 years in a dungeon. She is one of the first uh, of, uh, of this dungeon um, in Germany. And I asked her and she said, probably the BDSM people die. They are not into pain anymore. They only want fetish. They only want to look. They want the kinky style, the kinky style, but not the military style, the punishment, the, the, the pain. These people probably really die or they are never there. I went to the USR, uh, to the States, and working there for a uh, mistress I know for one weekend. Uh, there is a totally different customers. They are uh, more into spanking and uh, painful rule plays. And what we think is that um, the American and the Great British, Great British people are more into military style because uh, their educating is is different than ours. The, the, the people grow up with military, they grow up with these uh, uniforms. In England, they wear uniforms when they go in school. And they like the school rule plays a lot. They like the German drilling, the drill. And this drill here in Germany, or especially in Europe, is not that big. And that's maybe a one of this uh, problem. <laughs> Francesca. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation, it was amazing. I was curious about two aspects. The first is, that it, did it ever happen to you to find clips of your films inside porn tubes? And if so, what did you do? And second question, I really die for the desire films idea. But I, I was wondering, if, 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 I understand, if I understood right, it was like people coming to you, expressing their desire, and they were producing the film. Like they were putting money to produce that. So who owned the copyright of the film after that? Okay, uh, for the first question, um, the, uh, the question... <laughs> okay, the porn the tubes question. Did you find uh, clips of your work on porn tubes? And the if so... Yeah, the porn tubes uh, is a big problem and I, in the beginning of this, I found out or customers came by, uh, by email to me and say, hey, I found your videos there and there, are you sure that they can do that? And I get me a lawyer and a special agency, I pay money for this to remove these movies and this is, um, this is something what you cannot handle anymore because uh, you, move, you, you move this now and one day later is up again. It is uh, a work what never ends and it costs only money. And this is a big problem for all of producers, uh, especially small producers. They have not that big money to go to, uh, to have a lawyer in their own office. Um, this uh, is a problem you cannot handle anymore, that uh, you can go to a lawyer, but you can get only the people from Europe. You cannot get the people international. And in my case, uh, I have a lot of international websites I found, especially in Russia, uh, where they copy the whole movies, everything, uh, the whole site, and uh, this is impossible to handle anymore. Um, you have to deal with this. You can say, you can do for production, uh, you put a watermark sign in your movie and this has to be always moving so you cannot only cut it out and nobody knows. So you have at least the pos possibility to make marketing with that. Who steals your movie, he knows from who he steals it. This is all what you can do about that. But everything else is, is a work what never ends. Um, the second question was uh, the About copyright. people who are paying for a desire movie to play in my movie. Um, I always explain them that um, there is uh, a lot of um, uh, investment behind a production. 
And when I say, okay, you can play in this movie, but I still uh, publish this movie, we make a contract, and if you don't want to show your face, then you will cover up, and this will say this in the contract. But uh, I um, have not so many customers who are able to pay more than this to get a really private movie, because uh, if I calculate all the money I need for a production, uh, location rent, uh, camera, edit work, uh, everything around it, nobody is able to pay. Or I'm not that lucky that I have a big uh, spender <laughs> who uh, has the chance to do that. Yeah. He asked also who, uh, and I was also interested, who has the, the, the right of yeah. this movie? Uh, the copyright is all by myself. I have the license uh, for everything and um, of course I will make a contract, an ID shot, and uh, I have to because if not I cannot put it uh, somewhere in the partnerships uh, websites. Uh, I will not give this away, it will stay in my um, safe. <laughs> I hope so, and, uh, but uh, I need this, everybody needs I know many producers, they are not using this for long years, and I was wondering why they never get a problem. Um, I will not do that, and, and I will tell everybody to do ID shot and contract. It is very important. There is another question over there. So, um, hi, um, I was wondering when you told us that, that everyone is doing something for his own to earn money and you are only work on little islands, is there no GEMA or other like major organization negotiating with you with, with you, the porn tubes or like GEMA does with YouTube, I really don't get it because the scene you are, you're talking about is so full of love and authenticity and I think people would pay for, for, like, for seeing things, like appreciate these things and I really, maybe I'm too naive, but um, I, I cannot understand. Um, about the music, what, you, what I think I understand is um, uh, I use only GEMA free music. Um, this is one part you have to um, protect. You cannot use uh, music from international uh, people. So this is uh, because my edit guy he is a musician and he is uh, giving me the music. He can sing and he can, he can mix me some special music. It's not for the GEMA. Um, that is one of what we have to also take care of. <laughs> And of course, this also costs extra money to, if you have, uh, you can also buy music, GEMA free music uh, in the internet, so you're getting a contract, and you can use this for your special project, and you have this contract, and you can uh, publish this movie with GEMA free music. You have to pay, of course, for this extra, or you have somebody who can mix the music for yourself, but you cannot use some... Somebody like Madonna, for example, yeah? <laughs> I think she will be happy to uh, claim on you. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there any other question over in the audience? Some are really interested to know how let's construct and build up a, a fetish and BDSM uh, movies. No one, every one of you are really no, know perfectly how it works. They are shocked now. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I, <laughs> really. I stole the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I have a, a small question. Is uh, and actually is uh, has less to do with the um, internet and the tube, but mu much more about your work. Uh, do you think that uh, still Berlin uh, is a city where doing the job that are you doing uh, is good uh, in terms of? Uh, I mean, in terms of economically speaking and in terms of environment? Or uh, are you planning to move somewhere else? Uh, I'm wondering. 
Okay, um, of course, a uh, big city is always easier to find actors or a good connection uh, for locations, for example, or actors or visitors from other countries. They come for play party here, and then uh, I write them, okay, when you're here, maybe you have time for one day, we can shoot together, we can share content, or I give you some little money for working with me. This is one of my deal I do. And, um, but uh, for a producer, it will be always hard to get new locations. After a while, you uh, are on the limit where you have already shoot everywhere. And then I now traveling more and more outside of Berlin to find new locations because uh, the competition is like uh, I see in other movies of other producers always the same location. And then of course it looks always similar to my own production. So I always uh, try to be creative and look for some special locations outside of Berlin where not everybody shoot. And then, of course, it will be harder to organize all the actors to come over there. It will cost extra money, it costs more hotel, it costs more traveling, it costs more time. All this you have to calculate. It's like really like a business, you have to really calculate this. That's what I say. Um, I start doing this for fun. And the money was not so important, but now the more and more responsibility you take, you get, the more and more you have to calculate. You have to think like a businesswoman. And of course, it makes me proud to do this, but also it is a lot of uh, work what I really don't like. <laughs> And uh, like accounting. It's all about <laughs> the money. That is the problem. If I would have like a pool of money and uh, I can say, okay, now I have the money, I can shoot, I will do a lot more. But now I, it is not so easy because the market is full. The market grows up with many, many other people. Um, it's not only professional producers um, doing this now because of the market of the industry, uh, electronical industry. Uh, everybody is able to buy a camera. Everybody, every second or uh, every second uh, couple can do the same. Yeah, they can buy at the media market a camera, and they do that, and they will uh, shoot out in the in the living room and uh, giving content every day. Yeah? And this all goes in this little uh, market too. That is a problem. This was not happened 20, 30 years ago. I hear from old, old producers, they work in the 70s. They um, had a lot of fun. They, had a, they spent a lot of money. Um, they uh, shoot with cinema style, yeah? with big cameras. and. Uh, the uh, production costs a uh, hundred thousand euros or d mark, and now you have to uh, calculate with one thousand two thousand and have to see that you charge back this uh, after a while and uh, The other problem is the billing system you use in the internet when you con when you sell content. You have a lot of laws with the billing companies because the most of these billing companies come from the States, America, and they have very tough uh, rules. And, but I heard also that when you have enough money, then you can pay them, then they give you PayPal, they give you a credit card. When you give them money, you can get everything. When you have only less money, you are only client, a small client, you have a big problem. Then they say you have to go by the rule. And the rule of the United States is not this, not this, not that. And then you have not so much chance to sell content. That is another big problem we have. Yeah, <laughs> there are many challenges. I mean, what uh, I I think is that uh, behind all the challenges that uh, are you being a woman, uh, you being a, a self-made uh, person, you being uh, an artist, you being a creative worker, you being a sex worker, at the end... Uh, um, the important stuff is that uh, you are still trying to create uh, what you want to do. That is not uh, just the massive production uh, of something, but is the script that you have in mind, is the, is the uh, ideas that you are trying to realize, uh, and that is, is actually really important. 
and it's beautiful that you are still doing that. I'm quite sure that uh, in the future, and correct me if I'm wrong, for you will become uh, ever more difficult than uh, is now because uh, I think that still, as we saw, the, the, the social platform and the tubes uh, are just at the beginning of the huge expan expansion in our own life. Uh, I, I mean, what the, the, that's the feeling. So. Um, how you imagine yourself uh, like in the next, uh, I don't want to say 10, but let's say five years. <laughs> okay, um, what can I say about this? Um, another maybe uh, project of mine is to give the message of the women uh, worldwide, to give them uh, with my kind of uh, movie projects um, a new self convenience uh, con, con, uh, self consciousness yes self bewusst yeah self consciousness right. because what I see is that there is still a lot uh, more work to do with um, the women f uh, democracy <laughs> or uh, freedom of uh, women sexuality. Uh, this is a still, since so many years, still a man's entertainment. And of course, I know this is how it works. I understand what men, sometimes I think like a man already. <laughs> and, um, but still, I want this message um, to the women in the world to show them a new free sexuality life um, that they can take it when they want it. They can take what they want, they can take it how and with who they want. It's on them to decide what they want. And this is my new, this is what my next project maybe will be to give more power in the woman world with this kind of projects I'm doing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Can I be the first? Can I, could, are we going to do a workshop? <laughs> I would love to be part of that. <laughs> so I see that there is I another have, question. Uh, yes, um, actually two questions. One is more like a curiosity because uh, uh, I was also discussing with my team uh, about uh, uh, the regulation that you were actually mentioning that changed from country to country, the fact that you know, in some countries you can do feasting only f with three fingers, other four fingers. <laughs> so we were really wondering, but who is doing this regulation? I mean, we are really uh, curious to understand, uh, I mean, what is the point of making this change? How does it work and why? And, um, and then another question that maybe is a bit complex, but still perhaps I think is important to ask, uh, is that uh, uh, we also call this uh, panel the constructing power. And uh, also I know that among uh, the public that we usually have here at the Disruption Lab, it's not that all the time we have uh, you know, porn or SM expert. And so I think that this uh, point of uh, you know, also negotiating power into a, a BDSM relationship is really important uh, because it's based on consensus. And so since also we show the trailer, um, in which you know, there are also people doing a lot of extreme things, but uh, also everything is really regulated there because actually you, know, you negotiate with the people. So I would like to ask you also to elaborate a bit on that because I think it's a really an important aspect uh, if you speak about SM. So two questions. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, about the first question, um, that's what we all wondering, who is making those rules? Um, I think probably it will be the billing system, it will be the uh, political thing, it will be um, sure the bank will take money from everybody if they have the possibility. I think it, it is not the bank uh, what makes the rules, uh, but um, they work with the political yeah, government and they make the rules and we all know what the government doing most of the time not the right thing and they are doing a lot of things wrong so uh, they don't think about this business they only take the money out of us but they don't protect us or they don't give us uh, new opportunities and uh, this is a really political thing that we have always these rules changing uh, especially like in Switzerland um, many years it was forbidden uh, to show content 
peeing on people. Only peeing is okay, but peeing on people is impossible. And then they changed the rule a couple years ago. Uh, in this case, I sent already my content to my partnership in Switzerland and the police catch this uh, content in the border and they make a razzia in his uh, office and he went to court and he blamed it on me because I should know about these rules. And okay, I don't know all the rules of all over the world, so this was a big problem. He sent, his lawyer sent me a letter that I will not send any content anymore to his office. So I lost one partnership, okay. A couple years later, for example, in Switzerland, the rules changed again and is open now for peeing on people. And all kind of video shops uh, calling my distributor who is selling the DVDs, oh, please send me some DVDs. Please, we need it all. We need all content with peeing on people now because the rules are open. So what is this? The rules changing always and uh, they always expect from us to know everything and they don't even know themselves. So this is f the one thing what I wanted to say. Um, the second <laughs> was about the consensus, the power in the BDSM, the idea of sharing uh, and uh, power in the, in the BDSM uh, world. So how you as a domina and a slave uh, deal with the idea of power? Yeah, or um, you as a slave and the others a Okay, uh, what I see is that uh, many, many people uh, are more and more interesting in special fetishes, especially strap-on play, anal games, uh, normal people, not only uh, freaks, yeah. So um, we always have like a, a long con conversation before we start because of course I need to know him and sometimes I say we have to check first in a session for ourselves how it works and then when it works fine and we are very sympathetic then we can play in a movie. Uh, but I also get many, many offers for playing in my movies. Uh, most uh, are maybe only interesting in having a session in front of the camera. Um, I always say this is not working like that because uh, I invest a whole day with my equipment and everything and I don't know this person. So I don't know if I can shoot with you. I don't know that you're practicing. I don't know your limits, everything. So it's always um, a lot of work before. You have to communicate uh, with these people. You have to meet them and that is very important in this scene. And this scene grows up really big now. I think uh, now they have a lot of uh, private parties. Uh, and they have like a community in every little village uh, where they have a basement and they're playing with 20 couples together. And uh, this is like a, a new scene growing up and uh, it will be more and more public. But the opposite, like I said, uh, the, the club scene is shrinking because of, um, yeah, the public is not this, um, in, in this scene. They mix more and more uh, regular people in these clubs because they have to full, uh, they have to make the club full. And this is also a, a problem for the club scene, the, the, um, the internet, yeah, because many people are investing their time too much in the internet. That's why they are not going out no more for regular dancing. Yeah, uh, that, that's what I say. The spirit of the '90s, I miss it. And the '90s has not the internet. That's maybe why. Uh, there is another question there behind. It's and about is there an association on the national or European level? lobbying for the rights of the porn producers concerning uh, copyright uh, or, or uh, like this woman mentioned GEMA as an institution that uh, stands for the rights of the artists and claim money back from uh, the people who sell their music and go, uh, give the, that to, to the artists who own uh, the copyright. So is there any 
thing like that in the business or is this business much too much uh, exposed to, to, still exposed to discrimination that they are doing a dirty thing? Yeah, that's what I think is still a discrimination um, in the mainstream television news uh, that they don't really um, accept this big porn industry or mainstream or fetish BDSM, whatever. They show only one part of the um, of this uh, scene in a totally wrong way. Um, they show people uh, introducing them for BDSM, they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. They really uh, make this scene not looking very good, the television. <laughs> because uh, the people like to see this freak, freak shows. Yeah, They like to see uh, People maybe they really don't know what they're talking about and they're looking funny and they're, they're acting funny and uh, when you watch this and uh, you really think what the hell I'm doing here since 20 years, studying, learning, uh, trying to really um, w take care of everything and then you see the television showing a really wrong way of the adult industry because it's a big industry still and there's a lot of money they pay for taxes really and um, it's, a, it's a very important part of the whole life, the sexual life. The sexual life is still um, a, a secret nobody want to talk about but if we don't have this we are not here. And why? Because of the education of the church uh, 100 of years ago. There is the problem what still is in many people's head, uh, not to talk about sex, especially in, uh, when they are married. Uh, people, um, I know many people, they don't even talk about their sexual wishes. Uh, they come to us or they come to somebody from the mainstream um, porn, um, yeah going there in a house and uh, doing their sexual life because they cannot talk with the woman and the woman don't like to talk about it. And this is a problem what comes since hundreds of years, I think. So we experience, <laughs> we, we have, we saw the normalized uh, pornography thanks to internet, but that's not, doesn't really mean that there is uh, a huge compensation in awareness and uh, what you say before, selbstbewusst. And, uh, and on the other side, we still experience uh, an exploitation of this market because it makes much more money exploiting something than uh, giving this market the right uh, place in the world. So I would really love to talk a lot about this stuff, uh, but uh, I think we are running out of time and I think every one of you needs a break and I need a cigarette. So I really, really, really thanks uh, Carmen. That was really a pleasure for me to have him here and to chat with you. So clap again. Oh. And of course, thank to Tatiana and uh, and uh, please uh, stay. Uh, it's an half an hour break, and then we start uh, again the, with uh, other fantastic people going on with the, uh, with this conversation about porn tubes and the explicitity of pornography. Thanks.